Fala pessoal, beleza? Seja muito bem-vindos mais uma vez aqui ao nosso canal. Então se você é novo aqui pela primeira vez, peço a vocês que nos ajudem deixando aquele like, se inscrevendo, ativando o sininho das notificações e também compartilhando nossos vídeos com seus amigos, que assim você irá nos ajudar a trazer conteúdo diário para vocês sobre a seleção agora durante a Copa do Mundo 2022 do Catar. Irei deixar aqui na descrição desse vídeo o link do canal oficial aqui no YouTube da ESPN FC. Estará aqui na descrição desse vídeo. Agora vamos aqui para a análise aqui completa dos comentaristas estrangeiros sobre a grande vitória e atuação da seleção brasileira 4x1 na Coreia do Sul. Eu só quero começar com você. Sem dúvida, foi a melhor best performance we've seen, isn't it? That, that, that well, it, first it, half? It's the best 45 minutes, certainly, that we have seen from Brazil, but I think it's the best 45 minutes that we have seen from anybody yes. yeah. in this World Cup. And it's scary to think how good Brazil can be when given time and space in transition, and then these guys take over, and there's just options everywhere. Now, we've talked about it coming into the tournament, that there's a whole lot of options for Tite. It's one thing to talk about it, and then a completely different thing to actually see in on the field, the full display of all the options and everybody getting involved. Everybody getting involved with passing, with moving, with dribbling, with crossing the ball, with finishing chances. The assist to Richarlison's goal after what was a beautiful play from Richarlison to begin with comes from Thiago Silva. Mm -hmm. Thiago Silva is now playing through balls. Everybody getting involved in the attack. The finish from Vinicius, and, and people may, may just say, well, he had time to bring the ball down. And what, what, the fact that he actually brings the ball down and just passes the ball, massages the ball into the back of the net. That would not have happened a year ago for Vinicius, but it's happening now. There is quality everywhere. Neymar coming back from injury. He's also looking good in transition. Paqueta getting involved in the attack. Rafinha, who did not score, but was active throughout the course of the match. Everything and anything that you wanted to see from Brazil, in this World Cup, we just saw in those 45 minutes. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was special, Nadem. Yeah, it was, uh, it was very, very impressive. You know, that was a very special 45 minutes. And I think, for me, the performance I can think of that was a bit different. So that was maybe Spain against Costa Rica. And then we can say, well, it's only Costa Rica. But Costa Rica beat Japan. Who beat Spain and who beat Germany? So maybe it was actually an incredible performance overall, getting the 7-0. <laughs> But anyway, I think for Brazil... <laughs> Did it drop? No. Okay. And then obviously Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, and then Richarlison with the finish. Yeah, well, well, you can take any of the goals and, and actually find some magic behind them. But yes, to, to your point, the combination there. And, and when we talk about, about Brazil and how successful they have been and impressive they have been in the attack, part of what makes them so impressive is the fact that they're willing to counterpress as they lose the ball, that they're able to regain that possession of the ball very quickly, which is why Thiago Silva is in an advanced position, which is why Marquinhos is in an advanced position. Then Richarlison with individual skill, Thiago Silva able to find the through ball, and then Richarlison takes his time, finishes well. And at that point, we knew the game was over already, but at that point, it, it was sort of the combination of, man, if this team gets going, yes. there's no stopping them. Yeah. If this is how they're playing, there is no stopping Brazil. I, I look at Brazil as the team with the highest ceiling in this tournament, and we saw that for 45 minutes. Now, sustaining that is going to be difficult. Now, obviously, the competition is going to get tougher as they advance, but that was some kind of performance offensively. Not only in the fact that they created chances, not only in the fact that they put away those opportunities, but also that counter pressing that I'm talking about. The fact that late in the match, they're still chasing around, that you see Richardson chasing people around, that you see a team that has a mindset of regaining possession of the ball very quickly, being on the front foot, parking themselves in the attacking half, and when there are moments to go in transition, these guys are running with the best of them and they have all the talent in the world to finish the opportunities that they create. What, all, what else caught the eye for you today, Nadim, from Brazil? I think that, that is a good question. Um, I think in regards to them having that first half the way they did today in terms of scoring those four goals, I think to talk about the other side of it, they scored three goals in their group. And as crazy as that may be, they were the lowest scorers in their group. I think defensively they only conceded one, and obviously that's a huge positive. But, you know, we get more excited about this sort of free flow in Brazil. So to see them come out the way that they do, to be as attacking as they were and to be as clinical as they were, you know, for people who like XG, that XG was really high for this game. So I think that was what was that what that's what got me. You know, there was a sense of excitement and free flow in nature. You know, the, the way they were playing, as I say, was, 
it was really positive. I think there are lots of nations who I can, I can name, England specifically, who want to see like a more attacking style of football. Well, you know, you see Brazil do that today. And as, as, um, as Ali was saying there, their ceiling there, you can see them drifting towards it. And if they do manage to hit that sort of level, I think he's right. It's good. They're going to be a very, very tough side to beat because at the end of the day, you can either, they can either be defensively solid or they can go in a shootout. And in a shootout, you get the feeling they're going to score a ton more goals than you might. Dancing. Mm. Some have uh, taken umbrage to the celebrations, particularly for the third and fourth goal when the game was, was already gone, already done. Right. Well, Brazil are dancing even before the game starts. I'll tell you a quick story time about Brazil. They had destroyed us in Venezuela 4 nothing in a World Cup qualifier. Both teams are now on the tarmac of the local airport waiting for our charters because we needed to catch a flight for the next World Cup qualifier. Guess what they were doing? Dancing. So they dance before they win, they dance when they win, they dance after they score, they dance before they score. It's, it's part of the culture. You don't like it, you don't have to watch it. I don't mind it. Guess what? They earn the right to celebrate the goal however they want to celebrate. If you don't want Brazil to dance, stop them from scoring. Good luck with that. Nathan? Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. You know, what are people saying, like, you know, after you score, just apologize to the opposition. I'm really sorry that we scored against you. We will now jog back to the halfway line and we will not do that again. Like, don't be ridiculous. I think the way that they do dance, and as Alex just meant there, it's like, it's part of their culture as such, their footballing culture, just the culture in general. And that's them having fun. It's not disrespectful to the opposition. It's, they've earned the right to celebrate by scoring goals. If you want to do something similar, score more goals, score some goals and be creative your celebrations, do something different. I don't find it disrespectful, I find it essentially Brazilian. And I, I like it, it's, it shows them sort of enjoying their football, enjoying being around each other. And, you know, instead of just moaning when something great happens, you know, they really celebrate it. And you can feel that from the outside. And obviously for South Korea, you'd be disappointed, but the best way to stop them dancing is to stop them scoring. So surely you go back to that football element and at the end of the day, you know, you are the only person that can stop them. And if you can't do it, then let them dance. Uh, where do you stand on the dancing, Gavin? <laughs> I, like like the boys say, it doesn't bother me one bit. I think the dancing, the lightness, the fun thing, um, you know, that becomes an issue, that becomes a problem if it's not accompanied by discipline when they're actually playing. And, and there is a lot of discipline to this Brazil team. Uh, let's not forget, you know, you, you've got this the very talented front four, and then you have a guy in midfield like Lucas Paqueta who is essentially a number 10. He's not a central midfielder. He doesn't play that, that deep, and yet you have it so you can have another baller on the pitch. Well, that means everybody else has to work that much harder. And what Ali said there, you know, about Rafinha running around, chasing players, working, you know, all of this, 